So hello everyone and welcome back to some more of the Disco Elysium. So we have truly gotten far today. Not as far as maybe would be nice considering it's already 2300. So it's already way too late to do pretty much anything else today other than maybe go with that uh, lady into that, well, into here somewhere to spend a lovely night together or something. That's maybe plausible. Would be cool if it is. But otherwise, there's really not too much that we can do about the situation, I'd say. Not too much we can do. So I think, yeah, I'll just be going and... Uh, well, I was thinking also that it would be nice to go and talk to Titus, but I don't think they're even around there. But that's one choice that we could go and try to talk to Titus and uh, see about telling that we found this person and all that and then of course Klasse is also someone that I should be talking to again because she clearly again lied. She's all the time been lying so yeah yeah definitely would need to go and do those things but it is so late that I don't think either one of them would be around anymore so it's a little too late for that sadly just a teeny tiny bit too late. Let's go and run. Run through the winds, so to speak. And go rest for tonight. It's also, we got a lot of good information, even about that um, third member and all that. Okay, what's this? Why is there something here? This door is closed for today. Time to put the kids to sleep. Oh, it's snowing, by the way. Now that it's suddenly snowing, I do want to check this quickly because I remember that there was this spot here that I was supposed to go into when it's snowing. Like, wasn't it around here that it was stating one of my abilities or something that I should come here when it's snowing? Maybe I need to have the something more with shivers on to have that possibility. Maybe, possibly. Uh, I think I had something else with some shivers, yes. I don't know. I don't remember what it was, but I just know and remember there was something, some area that I was supposed to go back to when I would have the uh, snow coming down. And I remember it was somewhere around here. I thought that it was that spot, but nothing at least seemed to happen as of yet, which is unfortunate. Well, maybe it's just not yet, even if it is snowing. Same though, shame. Okay, let's get going then. Here's our own little place. I'm afraid we don't have time for rest stops right now, officer. We should really get back to the whirling. Alright, I don't... Right then, but I don't really know the reason to, considering just the fact that it's not like those people that we need to talk to are there and otherwise it would just be sleeping right at this moment at least that's my assumption i don't know what other reason there is to really go back there but i guess we have no choice but to try to go back there when that's what kim says so not much more we can do about that let's start running running as fast as we can back to the whirling in rags Uh, here, what? Stop. Now. It is time. Oh god, <laughs> this isn't, this, uh, this sounds bad. Yeah, trying for the tribunal considering that option is there. Probably, yeah. And I don't, I don't have a gun, I don't have anything. Um, sounds ominous. It is. What am I supposed to do? Arm yourself with anything you can, unless you have nothing because you didn't find your lost gun, then you walk to your death. Lovely. You're too likable to die. Don't worry. Well, only if I happen to succeed well enough with your, your skills suggestion that I think, considering you're talking to me now, is probably my best chance. But otherwise, I don't really believe this is gonna work out. I'm not sure I feel ready for what lies ahead. Then you'd better get ready. Whatever happens, I've got your back. Thank you, Kim. I appreciate it. He frowns and quickly adds. Well, then it's a good question. Should I... What should I do? Um, this takes minus two to succession. But otherwise it's cool enough of a thing. So I wouldn't necessarily want to go and remove it. That's also minus one to succession. That, that's overall Psyche plus. So I don't think that's important. But 
like I said, my I don't even the reaction speed. Like, what is it gonna really help at the end? Of, well, sure, it's gonna help a little bit if they're nonetheless. But hand-eye coordination, how much does it help when I don't have a gun? I would have needed to go and actually get my goddamn gun to be able to try to do this. But then I would have needed to do that one. I was actually planning to tomorrow probably do that so that I could get the gun, but I did not expect that this situation with Rupee would already launch this stuff happen right away. I thought that I should at least have a little bit of time, but apparently not, which really sucks. Well, I do think uh, this is my best chance to succession. Then I'll just need to equip whatever I can that gives some more of it, basically, I'd say. And uh, hope for the best, I'd say. Hope for the freaking best. That's minus one succession. That also gives plus one, but the plus one without minuses is, of course, better. Empathy. That's, of course, minus succession, so that's that's definitely not something I'm gonna take. That would be nice, but there's no point in hand-eye coordination when I have zero in the guns. That gives rhetoric, takes away from empathy. Drama, authority. Empathy boots. Inland Empire and Volition. Nothing else gives more succession. That's the only thing that I have that gives actually... Re reaction speed from this, I think, is probably good. Maybe. It's a little bit tough to say. But what other hats did I have? I had this, which I definitely wouldn't use. I have this, which really isn't useful here. So I think, yeah, I'll keep that hat. Drama isn't useful. But I guess the, this might be more helpful. Maybe. The Kingdom of Conscious Pants definitely aren't really helpful, but do I really have pants that will be helpful? Definitely not those ones. Don't really see many pants here as options. Uh, that one, but also definitely not good one. Most of these goddamn pants are bad. Then these give the encyclopedia. I guess it's as fine as it can be. Minus two, the physical instrument does sound a little bit stupid thing to have. Maybe this. Don't have a really good options with those ties either or anything. An interfacing clothes or something else. Don't really care for any of those abilities either. And boots are basically also... Don't know if it really matters too much. Let's have these. They look kind of nice. Then let's have to at least some sort of a tool. Not sure really if that really matters. But that's at least more of a thing that you could maybe hit someone with. If need be. Do you happen to be still selling something in here? Nope. Does this place happen to be open? Maybe I could buy something from there. <laughs> that might help me somehow. Nope. Definitely not open. So basically, this is all we can do. I'm all out of shit to give, Loincloth. <sighs> Welcome to the fucking reckoning. There's a feverish gleam in his eyes. Yep. There they are, those two. Here and here. Put your damn gun down. People are gonna get hurt. We need to talk this through. Alright? Titus remains calm. Cool and all, but I don't... I'm so not prepared for this. Um, I'm so worried. Shut up! Not gonna talk yourself out of this, loincloth shit fuck. This is the mercenary at the gates. His chest rises and falls on the ceramic breastplate. His fingers reach for the butt of his sidearm. There's something very wrong with him. Well, he is obviously very dangerous. They all are. They're mercenaries. Shh. The left and raises his left hand. This is a misunderstanding. Nothing irreversible has happened yet. You can just return to your unit and forget all about this. The Kipt is merciful, willing to spare us if we just forget about our murdered and humiliated commander. I think we should just kill everyone, Corti. Her tone is frighteningly emotionless. You are all drunk. Come to your senses. You won't gun down seven people in the middle of the street. This isn't a frontier town or a jungle outpost. She sounds very sure of herself. Easy, Lizzie. Let me handle it. I know guys like this. 
I'm sure we can come to a peaceful agreement. Ain't that right, fellas? His voice is almost gentle. He is facing overwhelmingly superior firepower and he knows it. Peaceful. It sounds like the armored figure is weeping, so this is the third mercenary, clearly, because we don't know him from before, so it has to be that one. <sighs> dot dot dot. Nest in your abdominal cavity like a little wild mouse. The mass man's words are barely intelligible, but you can hear them. Alright? Fuck, she was right. That must be the third mercenary. Yep, I would agree on that. The lieutenant is genuinely worried for his life. He should consult him before getting in there. Well, definitely. Um, so, the big one is the mercenary at the gate. The scap leader. Clearly, yeah. Let's whisper. If this turns into a firefight, we should take him out first. He nods. A sound strategy. He's the leader. So what do we try to do? My plan is not to get killed. But we have to intervene. He puts his hand on his holster. Yeah, I do agree we have to intervene, but oh, I don't even have full health, so let me at least use that. Ah, <sighs> my god. I don't want to be here. He doesn't want to, but he must. Well, but we are out of time, this is... The mercenary tribunal. The lieutenant nods, indeed. I so wish it wasn't. Like, this is really bad. Really, really bad. But, of course, we're not gonna just be walking away, so st stop! This is the police! Get between them. <sighs> Boy. Get lost, comedian. You cops had your chance. Now it's fucking time for some justice. He licks his lips, waving his gun at the crowd, losing his balance for a moment. He staggers backwards. I think he's calmed down a bit. No, he didn't. He is about to open fire. Um, well, <laughs> empathy and succession are my only chances, so no, he's coming down. I can talk to him. You can't think that way now. This is serious. Fuck. Well, that guy's definitely not calm. I guess it's here. Like, he's difficult to see, but when he's, like, all dressed in white, they all, I guess, more ceramic armor and stuff. The voice from beneath the helmet interrupts your thoughts. You only make out last word, which is indeed the big fuck. Uh, easy now. No one needs to die here today. Oh, people are gonna die today. We're not leaving it like this. These tribals hung him up for everyone to see. Mm. No one is going to kill anyone. Let's just put the guns down and talk like civilized human beings. With the worthless girl called a killer, loads his long rifle. It's a long rifle, so it actually could maybe be the killing weapon. The leader gives a small nod to the helmeted man. You feel your first contract as you stand there between these men, uh, all carrying real weapons. Even if it comes to a fight, it's always a good idea to drag it out, get under his skin. Well, yeah, that's my only chance. Peace. Always peace. It has worked thus far. Start with the first idea you have, move down from that, please. Yep, don't have a really good chance with the rhetoric. At least that's a pretty good chance, so maybe we can, maybe we can do it. Don't know. So, yeah, you've... Uh, well, I assume that then that means that we should be starting from the start and then go a little bit like list down. Not quite, because there's these two, but I will definitely try this before this one. Yes, yeah, no. But yeah, uh, you brought back up, point to the masked man from out of town. Oh yeah, that's rude. Rude, the killer, Owen Cloven. He doesn't talk much. The armored woman smiles a vicious smile. All of you cunts inside out. Uh, <laughs> what was that, Root? Rip you open. He really wants to kill, so the killer, eh? The gunner, the raddest, the killer. So yeah, the gunner. He himself gestures towards himself. He's the gunner. Then the raddest. He knows it was the woman. And the killer. He points to the figure clad entirely in ceramic plate. What do you think he does? Uh, challenge in success. There, on the rim of Hoek and Cloen's helmet, you count little stick figures. 19, 20, 21. 
Let's count them. Count the figures. About 50 little sticks figures. All of them black. Plus two little white ones in the end. So clearly people he skilled, but that's a good question if it actually would mean that. I would assume not. That would be too simple if it actually would be just killing black people. But um, you think you're real tough, huh? This killing is meaningless. Well, maybe, hopefully. Huh. He just stares at you with his watery eyes. That struck some chord, a dark chord. What are we waiting for? Let's blow that pig fucking mouth off his face. Oh god. Lance Corporal, just fucking shut up and wait for your order. He turns to the woman. He is not used to commanding or leading, he feels uncomfortable. He tried to shoot to kill. But okay, listen, they didn't do it. Yeah? Who did that? <laughs> that would be so... I wonder how that would work out if we just said, Yeah, we did it, but it's not possible. We weren't even in this area at the time yet when it happened. So no, that's just... That would be a lie, but... That would be really funny to see how that would end up working out. <laughs> um, but I don't think it was Rupi. I definitely don't think it's Titus. I I don't know about Glacia. It might I don't think she actually did the shooting, considering it's kinda impossible, I think, because she was in bed with him when he got killed, and it makes sense that the shot came from outside. Unless the full thing what they were doing at the time was a lie, which is I guess possible, but she might have something to do with it, yes, considering all the lies she's got and done and all the time doing, so definitely plausible, but I still can't really say it, but then it's just uh, this one or this one. I would like to point out that it's someone else completely. It was someone else, someone who's not here now. How? Fucking convenient. He gives you a trunk and stare, then puts his hand on the gun. Well, that would be interesting, but I think that's a bad idea. <laughs> bad idea to try to blame them for it. Uh, and I don't think it's actually true, nonetheless. But he was shot from a great distance. A sniper did it. You think I'm Fucking stupid cop! Why don't you just shut one of your pals here, right now, huh? There's a dangerous gleam in his eye. How about the kid? Tell me, it's a magic fucking sniper one more time. He points his gun at Elizabeth. Listen, please. This cop and this drumhead court marshal won't decide who... She raises both hands. He's gonna do it. He's gonna shoot her. Um, well, we have some sort of a chance of trying to do it. Let's try. Think, think. Why doesn't he believe me? Okay, we succeeded. The Hardy Boys confessed to the hanging, to hanging him all together. Titus said we took him out back and hanged him. He said it out loud in a public place. Well, then that is of course un uncorrect or incorrect because obviously enough they said it. But listen, he was shot. He wasn't hanged listen to me because there was a bullet but of course i don't really know how we can like we have the bullet with us but you're lying the paul heard it he doesn't move the weapon you heard wrong she and these men have been helping us find the shooter the lieutenant shouts <sighs> mm. The hanging was only a cover-up. Uh, listen. Liars. He pulls the trigger. A plume of smoke erupts from the muscle of his gun. I hope that that didn't really hit anyone, though. I... The shot rings in your ears. A low, teeny ring. The hardy boys yell something. The young woman stands and looks behind her. The shot has flown over her head, grasping a small pane of the glass window behind her. I missed. Okay, good. The man looks at his revolver and smiles, but you missed on purpose, clearly. You just wanted to scare them for the moment, but... I know what I heard, Corti. They said they killed him. 
They said it was a good way to end a Sunday night. And they really definitely shouldn't have said something like that, like, ever. The radio operator looks at him. That's bad. You need to stop arguing now. This won't be won by talking about the case. They don't care. Well, you're all drunk, you know? Look at yourselves. Yes. So what? Well, your judgment is impaired. You will regret this. Nah. I'm clear as day. Fucking government ordained super soldier. <sighs> he wipes the sweat from his brow. Enough already! What is this? We didn't come here to fucking chat! The woman's voice is furious. Interrupt me again and I will execute you on the spot, Lance Corporal. The outburst is accomplished by yellowy saliva around his mouth. The wild pines rep does not approve of this, which is of course true, but I don't know. You think I care what that company cunt thinks? <laughs> it's a hollow laughter, yeah. I was thinking that I don't really know that they would care about it much. After all, that's the problem. They can't control them. That's why it's good even for them, the wild pines, that this is a police matter that maybe he could try to somehow stop them, but... He isn't just boasting. He really doesn't care. Back out of his now... Back out of this now or it'll get bad. Yeah, I... I guess I should then do it. Yeah, maybe they don't forgive and all that, but I, I don't think it's a good idea to go into that direction. Okay, let me just say one thing. Change the topic. Fucking waste this fuck! The woman squawks. Ignore her, she's not the main threat yet. So, I, I, we can at least try to ask about Klaasle. So where is Klaasle? She can explain this. Who the fuck is that? Klaasle, the woman upstairs. Where is she? She left! The manager calls down from the balcony. Great, she's left. We... <laughs> God damn it. I guess I should have done something a bit different when she's left now. I was hoping that she wouldn't, but I don't know where she has really anywhere to go. Considering, but... Hmm. What do you mean she left? She left! Her room's cleaned out! Right before these assholes showed up! She just... I'm, I'm pretty sure she was able to be prepared for this. Still doesn't mean necessarily that she has something to do with the murder. Or that... Anything of a sort, but... Um, she could be, she couldn't be. We don't know. But nonetheless, it's suspicious when she's just left. We should have arrested her. <sighs> the lieutenant whispers, his eyes still on the armed mercenaries. And maybe we should have... You can feel how upset he is with himself, just for a second. Then the fear takes over and he's back in the moment. Hey, Bushman! Your little cunt isn't gonna help you out of this one! Apparently not. The veins on the man's neck expand as he yells. She's gone. Forgot, forget about it now. Concentrate on this. Well, this we still don't... Sure, we got them arguing. That doesn't help too much. This is the best we can do. I just hope that we get it. It's a good chance, so... Hope so. Talk about the hanged man. And it's a failure. We just can get so bad rolls into this when... Like, it's still only one away from success. Basically, if I would have forgotten that stupid thought instead of putting one more point into succession, we would have had it. Just that little simple thing. My god, I hate it. Of course, nothing bad will happen. Talk about his dead friend. He seems stable enough to take it. <sighs> uh. I feel like I got to know your dead friend during our investigation. Don't fucking talk to me about my brother, Loincloth. He squeezes the words out from between clamped lips, his hand on the pistol. Okay, yes. Immediate failure. Things are worse now. He's observing your every motion carefully. Well, I don't believe we can succeed in this when we didn't succeed with the other one, but what other choice do we have? What the fuck? Then we succeed in this. Succession? We are so much better. We have 80% chance to succeed. We fail. Then rhetoric? 20% or so chance to win. And we happen to get that one? That's just... 
That's not right, but I guess that's how the dice rolls go, right? Alright, here we go. This is an illegal tribunal. Colonel would never sanction this. Who's the commanding officer? Take your pick. Well, commanding officer is of course that guy. Really? None of this looks like it's going to do anything but piss him off. Well, apparently I have no other choices. Gulp and say nothing. <laughs> Um, Krenel. Krenel would never sanction this. Just a question. Uh, who's the commander of the take your pick? Take your pick? Well, it was this guy, but now I don't remember the goddamn name of his. Sure, just a question. Who's in charge of your unit after the death of your colonel? I am a Grinnell Major with over 15 years of live combat experience. When my colonel gets hanged by clay monkeys, I lead the platoon on a retaliation strike. So you are the highest ranking of the three of you, and that it was something we already gathered before, basically. Nah, I just have the biggest gun. He wraps on his armored barrel-like chest. That's a different type of a reason. Technically, the other man has the biggest gun, but we are beyond that now. Mm. Hold on, what's the highest rank in Krenel? King Reaper. He says without irony. So as the leader of this group, reconsider your actions. This does not need to end in bloodshed. You're right, but you see... I want it to end in bloodshed. He pauses and smiles. Okay, it's not much, but he's thinking about something else, and his hands is off the gun. This did something. Why did I not find my lost gun just stand there? Okay, it didn't do much though. What's that, loincloth? I can't hear you. Sounds like you got your mouth full of dick. Rude. Kill me and you'll never find out who killed your brother. I've been withholding information. Rude. The man kill looks him. to his left. Kill him. Great. Well, this is gonna be bad. This is so not gonna work out. The porcelain man raises his rifle and takes aim at you. His hands are steady. And he long and the long barrel of the rifle sways slowly. Okay. Yeah, not a good chance at all. Blink. Think. Thinking is our only chance. You stare down the barrel of the gun. You see Root's mass behind it. His eyes in the slit of the helmet. Like a camera lens focusing on you. Is there anything? Anything we could use to protect this frail body? That gun will tear us to pieces. Just dodge the first shot. And the second will be easier. Trunks are quick to anger and make mistakes. Titus behind you. Must be aiming at him right now. Don't forget, there's additional reinforcement. Just survive this. Kim. What is Kim exactly doing then? From the corner of your eye, you can see the lieutenant raise his pistol and aim it at the root. He's trying to find a straight line of sight before the rifleman can take you out. Okay, that's not nearly as bad as it could be, so we might have a chance of dodging it, but I don't I don't really feel very trusting of it. He does look like he has a big gun. So yeah, let's try to dodge the shot. Yeah, not so surprising that we would have failed. Damage held! Minus two. Let's uh I guess this don't even do anything at the moment. Alright, I guess it can't do anything here. Uh, the shot rings at, and you stumble. Something violent tugs at your shoulder, pushing you backwards with incredible force. A volcano of burning pain erupts from your left shoulder. The pain flows over your entire body like an awful shock. A cream knowing rises from within. Half of your body must be gone. God, please. The lieutenant says quietly without trembling. He aims, face pale. He's aiming for the eye slot in Root's helmet, an extremely difficult shot. I just hope that he can make it then. He has to. The rifleman will fire at you again. 
Then two shots ring at once and you hear a scream. But you are too hurt to see who got hit. Who screamed? Glenn, dying in a puddle of blood behind you. He mang his mangled torso has two gunshot wounds. Blood gushes out of them like red geys geysers. Oh god, what's out? You see two cold eyes looking at you, through all the smoke and the panic, and a pistol raised aiming at your chest, point blank. Then the man squeezes the trigger. That's so not gonna work. Look him in the eye. A look of happiness. His eyes seem unnaturally bright, shining like stars. Something in the fear must distort him somehow. He is evil. And the end. Here it comes. Death. Yeah, evade the shot. So not gonna evade that shot. Yep, there we go. Down we go. I would have needed to got the super gun. I really would have needed to, but I really didn't expect that me going and already finding uh, Rose would already mean that we could into this situation. <sighs> Sucks. You can't, there is no time. Something inside your pelvis explodes, your entire lower body is on fire and your legs can't support you. You fall down like a rag doll. The pain is too immense to scream. It pushes the air out of your lungs, everything goes dark, a distant blur as you recede into it. <sighs> That's your lower body. Feel slick and warm with blood. The pain is too strong to know what has happened there. Even clutching to your consciousness takes everything you got. What parts of me are missing? Most of what's down there. Well, fine then. I don't care. Fuck me. You can also feel bone or where the bullet went in. Something very sharp, like a broken teeth under your fingers. Listen through the darkness and the pain. The Hardy Boys are yelling, someone is running, jumping over you. In the background you hear gunfire shatter class. The man in pain, a familiar sound. It's Titus. With a splat like meat, you hear bullets rip into him, his voice still giving orders grows fainter. A gurgle. Aw, poor Titus. He's not gonna make it. Aw, I'm sad. I wish he would. I don't want him to die. Because I failed. On the other hand, we did succeed at least with the suggestion, but it's not enough, so... Try to open your eyes. What do I see? Nothing. A persistent darkness. Dancing lights of pain. Distant shadows cast by them, like a hellish play. You're bleeding out. Out of it, out of it, a silhouette appears, crouching over you. You hear a familiar voice filled with urgency and fear. Mmm, this, I like this the most, I think. There's a white shadow that smells like apricot. It's always there. Always that goddamn smell. Stay with me. You feel burning hot tears streaming from your eyes. Mmm. <laughs> she please called them, ki her Kim. <laughs> no, I can't forget it. Even when I drank so much, I still remember the love. I still remember the smell that she had. Yes, keep talking. You hear me? Stay awake. The left hand pushes down on your wound hard. But you can't. It's so hard. Your eyelids grow heavy and the sound ever more distant. And a cold comes over you. The lieutenant too is somewhere far away, almost gone, when suddenly you sense something behind him. A shadow towering. Someone stands there raising his pistol at him. The lieutenant does not see it. He's pushing down on your wound with both hands. Oh god, I have to warn him. Yeah, I... Please, this has such a good chance. Don't fail. No, Kim! Yes, we managed to warn him, that I'm so happy about. No, you scream, behind you, from your bloody lips, your eyes are full of fear. There is no room for hesitation, the lieutenant turns around and fires, his body falling on yours in the course of the motion. Oh no, at least he managed to fire too, but just... He also falls. You hear a roar of pain, a death scream. The sound disappears like someone presses stop on the tape. The hulking figure too is gone, and so is Kim. 
and the full world fall in the total darkness. This is that. One more door, baby. One more door. No, let me back into the fight. I have to help them. The fight? There is no fight. The fight is over. It was lost. A thousand years ago, you have led here forever. Keep falling deeper. Take the door. Like the safety system tower these at least, it doesn't look like these are talked. But I would love if these would still be talked because they used to be. He's not taking it. His body is not taking it. Oh god, no, he's not disengraging. It's swelling up instead over the hours, hurting, moaning in his sleep. So I guess we are not dying. <laughs> and rotting and being disinfected and smelling of drugs and feeling saliva in his mouth drifting in painkillers dressing in his wound in his wound sleep he can't go not before the case is solved that's true volition that is true we can't not yet there is a radio in the distance a radio of the world playing sounds good morning elysium soon you will return to the world Hours turn to two to days. Soon he will get up again and go through it. Again. Again. Finally we know what the infernal engine was outside. The clarion call. It was him. He is the infernal engine. He never stops. He only gets worse. Cool. Great. To be continued with Kida Rusha next time in Disco Elysium. See you all then.